A very good afternoon, everyone. Today, we have a very special guest with us. And uh, before we dive into our session, I would like you to uh, know a little about her. So we have uh, Miss Sindhu with us from IntelliTots. Uh, Ms. Sindhu ha is a science graduate from Bangalore University. She has worked in the corporate space in the inception of companies managing human resource and operations for over a decade before starting First Cry IntelliTots. She has partnered with Bindu, who happens to be her sister, and who is an academician. So with her experience and formal training from First Cry, they both started out in Sahakar Nagar in the year 2012. It's indeed a pleasure to have you with us, Ms. Sindhu. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, Arjuna, for that wonderful introduction and welcome. Thank you for having me on this platform. You're welcome. So, uh, of course, you have mentioned uh, when you started with IntelliTots, but I would uh, like to understand that what was the thought behind starting the school? So, Arjuna, like you rightly mentioned, I was in the corporate space for a really long time. I always had this longing to move into the education space, considering my sister is an educationist herself. She's been in this line for a really long time. Uh, so a lot of okay. discussions at home were primarily around the education space between me and my sister. So, um, you know, even when I considered moving into the education line, the initial thought was to ensure that we provide a safe and comfortable space, you know, for both children and parents. Uh, having said that, we also knew that we needed a professional and sound handholding when it came to the preschooling space to begin with. And uh, that was when we met up with the team, which is now called First Cry in Delhi Thoughts. A lot of their uh, philosophies and values resonated with more both me and uh, Bindu. And uh, then there was no looking back. Uh, we joined hands with First Cry Intelli Thoughts. And then, of course, First Cry Intelli Thoughts Nagar came into existence in the year 2012. Awesome. That's amazing. How is it working with your own sister in this space? I would say it's an absolute blessing. I mean, uh, I think I have the best with me. I mean, considering she comes with decades of experience in that space, uh, it makes a you know huge difference uh, because knowing and having to in implement something are two different worlds. And since uh, Bindu has the hands-on experience uh, in that space, it makes a world of a difference. And I'm so glad I have her with me here. That's amazing. It's so lovely to know that. Okay, so Ms. Sindhu, I would like to know that, uh, you know, in, especially in Bangalore kind of a city, there are uh, so many schools that are, you know, keep uh, coming up each year. And especially where preschools are concerned. So every second or third lane, you will find a whole lot of preschools which are mushrooming. So with all such schools coming up all around you, how do you uh, stand to make a difference? As you rightly said, Archana, I think today um, you will find a preschool uh, literally every furlong distance. So um, here at First Price, Akanaga, um, see, we believe that the first school of a child should be a mere extension of home, right? True. These are um, little minds who believe their world to be their home. So the transition from their home space to preschooling is an extremely sensitive transition, I would say. You can, you know, either stamp joy in the child's heart or you can start the child forever. So it's, an, it's a very huge responsibility that is being, you know, entrusted on you. Uh, to begin with, I think one of the strongest traits will be the curriculum at first cry. Uh, the curriculum is called IntelliC. It is, it is a very well-researched curriculum and it is developed by a group of early education experts. So uh, the idea is to absolutely nurture love for learning and uh, we lay a lot of emphasis on developing uh, skills which are required for a child to be able to thrive in tomorrow's world. Like we all know, right, Archana, it's no more about ABCs or one, two, threes. I mean, uh, children are well adept with all that even before they come into preschool. So our curriculum aims at building skills, I would say. The very basic but extremely important skills. Um, uh, the skills which we call the six C's of the curriculum, basically uh, communication, confidence, 
critical thinking, collaboration, and compassion. So these are skills which we aim at developing through our curriculum. And uh, coming to infrastructure, the infrastructure is extremely child-centric and it is uh, designed in such a manner that, you know, there is more space for fun. And uh, when that whole atmosphere is made, uh, you know, feasible for fun, it makes the space more conducive for learning. Now, uh, you can have a great brand, an extremely good curriculum, uh, a well-designed infrastructure, but, you know, if you have all of these and you do not have the right passionate adults imparting this, all of it could fall flat, right? So uh, here we take pride in saying that, you know, uh, some of our teachers at First Cry in Delhi taught Sakanada have been with us right from the day of the out. Yes, Arjuna. So as you rightly pointed out, uh, today you will find a preschool, you know, in the vicinity every for long distance. So at First Cry Sakanada, uh, you know, we believe that the first school for a child should be a mere extension of home, right? Uh, here you're shaping little minds who all along believed their world to be their home. So the transition from home to preschool is an extremely sensitive phase. Like we keep saying, you know, uh, you have the opportunity to be able to stamp joy in the child's heart or you can, you can start the child forever. So I would say it's an extremely um, uh, big or a huge responsibility that is being entrusted on you. True. So um, to begin with, uh, one of the strongest traits in the uh, is the curriculum at first cry. Uh, the curriculum is called IntelliC. And this is a very well-researched curriculum, which is developed by a group of uh, early education experts. Uh, the aim of the curriculum, of course, is to nurture love for learning. And this is done by developing skills, essential skills, which are required for a child to be able to thrive in tomorrow's world, right? Um, we move from, uh, you know, the mundane of ABCs and one to threes, because today children walk in knowing it all. So our curriculum primarily aims at building skills. The six essential skills or the six C's of the curriculum is what we call it. That being communication, confidence, critical thinking, uh, collaboration, creativity, and most importantly, compassion. So uh, I think that would be the first and uh, foremost uh, strong trait of First Cry in Delhi Thoughts. Coming to the infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure is extremely uh, child-centric. It's designed in a manner which makes it fun, you know, and makes it conducive for learning for the children. Uh, now, like we keep saying, you can have a great brand, an extremely good curriculum, a well-designed infrastructure. But if you do not have the right team of adults imparting this curriculum, all of this could fall flat, right? So uh, here we take pride in saying that, you know, some of our teachers have been there with us right from uh, inception, from day one. And uh, we strongly believe that we have the best team because only if you have a joyful teacher can you achieve a happy learner. So yeah. I think uh, these definitely set us apart from the rest. Wow. I think it's really perfectly put how you summed up so many things into one. And that's so true. And I think uh, it's very interesting that the kind of curriculum that you're focusing on the skills, because rarely do schools talk about, uh, you know, the skills which are so important. And I really Absolutely. loved that uh, you have the most important one, which is compassion, which is yes. required in today's world. That's so amazing. Absolutely. So um, moving on to my next question Ms. Sindhu I would like to ask you that do you how much do you think uh, you know is academics you know for a child or in terms of learning how important is academics you know um, is it uh, sufficient uh, you know for a child to succeed okay um, Arjuna, I think uh, we've moved away from the concept of being academics alone defining a child's success, mm -hmm. right? Today, uh, we lay a lot of emphasis on skill development, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we talk about, you know, self-esteem, confidence. Mm -hmm. These are very important virtues for every child, even for us adults, yes. for that matter, Absolutely. right? Yes. And I think these are, uh, you know, personality traits that need to be established very, very early in life. True. And uh, this is better nurtured when it's outside the house environment. And I think this is where, again, a preschool plays a very huge role in defining the personality of the child. The school, uh, you know, should be able to create a 
reliable environment where the child learns to be independent, you know, he or she builds social skills, empathy, compassion, like we mentioned earlier. Yes. Uh, you should uh, create an environment which encourages curiosity and creative, mm. you know, mm. and uh, create um, situations or you learn from your peers and adults to deal with setbacks, yet to be able to get back and say it yes. is okay. I mm. think these traits are definitely far more important than academics. And I would say that, you know, if these traits are established in a child, academics comes very naturally post that. So we definitely work, you know, around being able to make a well-rounded child than being, uh, you know, than just pushing academics down mm. to the parent or to the child. That's amazing. And, uh, you know, usually in the minds of parents, they wonder that, uh, you know, my, uh, suppose their child is a, a three-year-old and another child who's of the same age probably knows much more than their own child. They always uh, feel, you know, why is my child not up to the mark? So uh, do you think that this, there is any particular way that a child learns? Um, one, um, Archana, say one, one size does not fit all is what we keep, you know, uh, repeating. So uh, you can have a pattern in which you're going to impart your curriculum. You can have a schedule, you know, uh, by which you will run the day. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily work that way, right? Yes. Uh, to begin with, what comes most innately to a child uh, playing, right? Hmm. So uh, what better way of learning than uniting learning with play? So here at First Cry, we strongly believe that learning in the form of fun is when registration happens, exploration hmm. happens naturally. Hmm. Basically, the play with or the activity-driven method. And it is a theme-based learning that we follow at First Cry. Right? basically to make it exciting for the children but all the concepts of learning are driven through themes in the form of activity now having said that this is what we have defined as a means to impart curriculum but mm -hmm. given a classroom you can have different kinds of learners in the classroom right mm -hmm. you can have an auditory learner you know a child registers better when he or she she's constantly listening to things mm -hmm. another child can be a visual learner in the class you know he registers better when he sees something continuously Mm. right mm. so uh, when you impart a curriculum in a certain manner it is not necessary that you reach out to all the 10 children in the class in the same manner or it is not necessary that all the 10 children in the class assimilate or grasp what is being given to them in the same manner so the preschool uh, space up to the age of six which we call as which we call as a uh, age of free range thinking you know their, they, their thinking is boundless and it is definitely not a time for us to set milestones or limit them with boundaries and draw a comparison of you know what a child did better or you know what a child did less right uh, like we say when it's a free range of thinking I think it's the responsibility of us adults both parents and uh, you know the school to just uh, let them learn seamlessly you know without drawing boundaries or my milestones and we also train the teachers to be able to reach out to these different kinds of learners. So if there is a particular theme that is being introduced in the class. Uh, the teacher tries to reach out to the kinesthetic learner, to the auditory learner, to the visual learner. So maybe on a particular day, the auditory learner in the class picked up because, you know, there were more uh, auditory or, you know, listening skills that were being imparted. Never mind, the same thing will reach out to the visual learner on another day. So this is definitely not the time for us to be, you know, uh, setting to be setting up benchmarks or milestones. I mean, let them just free, uh, flow through the curriculum and, you know, let the learning be uh, seamless. That is when you enjoy the preschooling phase of your child too, rather than being an anxious parent. I think it's a, uh, it is a two-way communication between yes. both the parent and the adult to be able to deliver this to the child. Very, very true. So do you think that, um, like we, since we were talking about skills, um, are there a, any particular skills uh, that are required to shape a child's personality? Uh, you know, even from a parent's perspective, probably these skills or that would help the child succeed in life, some kind of skills that would also uh, develop a child's personality and help the child to succeed as well. Yes, 
see, when a child comes into the preschooling uh, space, Archana, one is, uh, you know, uh, it is very important to be able to instill independence in the child. So before the age of six, our aim is to be able to develop fine motor skills, gross motor skills. And how do you achieve these skills, right? So like I said, there are a lot of activity-based learning that happens uh, at school, which helps them achieve this. Now you might look at it like a very, very small thing, uh, a simple activity, like uh, maybe even like threading a couple of beads, right? For the child, it is just a pure fun of getting the beads down through the string. But there is a lot of associated learning that comes with a simple threading activity, right? Now, uh, probably the child is picking up colors through the activity. Uh, there could be a certain a pattern that the child is following through that activity. It could be about numbers. And um, it could be, uh, you know, a lot of learning, like I said, with a simple activity. Added. And there is a fine motor skill development that happens through threading, uh, you know, through the threading activity. Similarly, sand play activity, a water play activity, blending nature with learning learning, it, yet another effective approach. So learning, like I said, happens seamlessly with the help of all these fun activities. So the playway method, what we follow at first I tell you taught, accelerates learning in a child to be able to develop fine motor skills, gross motor skills. So outdoor play is like a, an essential part of their everyday routine. Outdoor play is important because that is when we work on developing the bigger muscles. Uh, so it could be a simple trampoline activity, a hula hoop activity, uh, you know, any tricycle riding activity, these help. So these are children who come to us around the age of about 1.5 or 2, right? Some of the children are just developing their gait, their posture. So helping them develop these skills, the fine motor skills, the cross motor skills, uh, these are very important for the child to be able to, you know, feel independent. Then we move on to social skills. That is, again, a big area which needs to be well established in the preschool space. True. Then, uh, there are activities that are happening. Activities not only help them develop socially, it also helps them develop emotionally, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the home atmosphere is going to be very different from what the child is exposed to in a school. He or she is interacting with peers, uh, with adults who are different from whom they see at home every day. So there is a lot of, you know, social development that happens. There is a lot of emotional development that happens. So social skills, emotional skills, gross motor skills, all of these are well established in a preschool space. And that is when the child gets ready for mainstream schooling. Okay. So, um, of course, you've touched a little upon the activities that uh, take place at your school. Uh, before we move into that uh, space, I would like to understand from you that um, how important, though you, of course, you're following the playway method, how important is the school curriculum, you know, in a child's life? Um, see, curriculum one, I think, uh, like I said, there is a set routine that we draw for a particular week. So, you know, the child is introduced to saying that this week we are going to be focusing, say, for example, on the color red, right? And so all the activities for that particular fortnight, every fortnight we change our theme, is going to be around the color red. So one, when you have a curriculum in place and you're kind of bringing the child into that, you're establishing a routine with the child. Right? So the child over a period of time knows that every fortnight I'm going to be introduced to something new. The child, the teacher keeps the child prepared for what he or she is going to go through for that entire week. So there is an excitement set in for the child saying, you know, tomorrow, considering our theme is red, we are going to be looking at, you know, red objects or red fruits or red vegetables. So one is you're keeping the child ready. There is a lot of preparedness that goes with the curriculum, right? And uh, secondly, you're making it exciting. The child is looking forward to what is in store for the next day. And um, when there is a curriculum in place, you know, there is a certain set of goals that the teacher knows that, you know, she has to achieve by the end of that particular theme for the child. So uh, whenever there is a theme rolled out, the theme comes associated with these six skills that I had mentioned earlier, right? We spoke about communication, confidence, uh, you know, compassion and creativity and collaboration. 
So all the activities that the child is going to be doing for that particular fortnight, one way or the other will aim at, you know, achieving the skill in the child. So, you know, there could be a particular activity in the curriculum for that week that the child is going to be doing in collaboration with another adult or with another child. So, right, you're working on developing the collaboration skills. There could be an associated uh, art activity or there could be, it could be a simple, you know, paper tearing activity. Okay. So, there is a lot of creativity that comes in. There is a lot of, you know, skill development that comes in. So, um, I think curriculum uh, plays an extremely important role because without, you know, a focused end result in mind, you cannot go about imparting these, right? Mm -hmm. So you will see that all these six essential skills that is required for a child is being achieved every with every single team. So every 15 days, you have a new team, there is a new set of things that the teacher is doing. What are you achieving at the end of it? It is these six skills, which we want the child to have, you know, developed seamlessly by then he or she is ready for mainstream schooling. Great. So it's good to know that all these skills are interwoven into the curriculum. Yes. That's amazing. So uh, do you think, uh, you know, that is there uh, any way that uh, a parent can help a child uh, nurture or develop curiosity? Yes, uh, definitely. I, I think this is the best age, you know, for you to be able to uh, develop curiosity in children, right? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Arjuna, they have a free range of thinking during this phase, right? So it's important for us, whether it's a parent or a teacher, to capitalize and develop this. Now, there are various ways by which you can achieve this. Activities, again, I just cannot stop stressing on the importance of activities. You know, you need to allow the child to get messy, whether it's paint, water, sand, it could be anything. You know, by doing so, you are uh, allowing them to uh, explore textures, explore sounds. Uh, another important thing that, you know, we very religiously follow during our curriculum uh, imparting at school is asking them open-ended questions. So when there is a particular theme that is introduced, there are uh, questions which are framed that cannot be answered just with a simple yes or a no, right? So this helps develop their thinking skills. This further helps them get curious. Uh, so that is something that we kind of do at the end of every theme. And explore the surroundings and the community around, right? This is when field trips come into the picture. So every theme that is being introduced, there is an associated uh, field trip, a field trip, sorry, which Okay. Uh, is being conducted by the school, this brought their curiosity. Uh, another um, very, very important thing, and I think one of my favorites is being able to read books or story cards for them. I think nothing, literally nothing can beat the imaginative mind that reading can bring about, right? So uh, we do a lot of uh, reading activities uh, with the children on a regular basis. And um, I think most importantly, Arjuna, uh, as adults, be curious yourself self right expressing your curiosity for things around will inspire them to be curious too and all of these and I think again uh, the parents should also be involved and you know read out books to them read mm -hmm. out story cards to them create an environment for you know for the child to be able to question you encourage the question no matter how trivial or how frivolous it is be able to build conversations around those small questions I think these are the small things that help them develop curiosity. True. No, absolutely. That is so true. I think uh, parents want a lot of things to come naturally, but that doesn't happen. A no, little absolutely effort. Yes. They need to put in a little effort, but that will go a long way in, uh, in building the curiosity in the children. So uh, the workforce, as we call them, uh, are teachers who are the pillars of every school because naturally not one person can handle everything in school. So uh, coming to the teachers in your school, uh, I would love to know that uh, how, what is the process of a recruitment that you follow there? Maybe some parents may be interested in wanting to be a part of your school or uh, some people that they know would want to be part of your school. So what is it that you actually look for apart from probably the qualification in the teacher? Right. First and uh, foremost, we exclusively look for teachers who have former preschool experience 
or trained in the early education space. Uh, this is definitely to begin with. So after we've met up with them, uh, there is an uh, interaction that happens with the first CRI team post which the onboarding happens. So the teachers are initially put through a formal training, which you know basically helps them align with the first guy principles and philosophies. Okay. The uh, initial, uh, I would say about three to four weeks, uh, the teacher works alongside a teacher who's already in the system, right? So they get, get a hands-on experience before they take off on their own. And uh, training is a continuous affair here at First Cry. It happens almost every quarter. There is a refresher training that happens. Okay. Uh, so teachers are normally trained by the academics group. We have an exclusive academics uh, group and uh, the training is imparted by this group every quarter. Um, I, at this point, I would also like to mention, Archana, during the pandemic, uh, we also had all our trained uh, teachers trained under one of the leading uh, child psychiatrists, you know, because that again was a very, very uh, mm -hmm. sensitive uh, phase, you know, where teachers yes. had to change mm -hmm. their approach as we moved towards online yes. classes then. And that was the need of the hour. True. So uh, training is a very integral part of, uh, you know, a uh, very integral part of a uh, teacher's uh, calendar routine. Mm -hmm. And okay. of course, there are continuous audits that is conducted by the first okay. crime team. Uh, when I say audits, it's basically for us to try and understand if the teacher is able to reach out to every child in the class. And this is mm -hmm. where a small space like a preschool makes a difference when compared to a mainstream school, yes. right? So the teacher yeah. needs to go on with every single child in the class. And the most of all, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, you definitely need to have somebody who has that undying love for, you know, uh, children to be able to spend time with them, uh, the passion, you know, without that, I mean, in respect of the numerous trainings that happened, you know, the teacher will never be able to do justice in that space. And I think it's an ongoing process for a teacher, for us as well, you know, even uh, for anybody in the education space, uh, once you're in, to be able to uh, open up to learning, relearning and unlearning at any given. And uh, I, I'm sure I mentioned this earlier, uh, I mean, we take great pride in saying that, you know, some of our teachers have been with us right through from 2012 and I think that's wow. another blessing that yeah, we have. That's, absolutely that's an amazing yeah. feat that's amazing yeah that speaks about uh, you know how you take care of your staff so that's amazing thank uh, you so much so um, moving on to uh, some of the annual events, like every school has their annual events. So it at IntelliTots, what are the some of the annual events that uh, take place? Um, I think I would uh, probably talk about the popular events so far. Okay. Uh, one uh, would be something which we call as a farm party. Uh, this is something that our children look forward to every single year. This is when we come together with the local farmer here. We set up a barnyard at school. We have wow. farm animals visit our children at school on that day. Wow. Uh, so children get to eat a lot of, you know, local cuisine. We play some traditional games. I think it's, you know, more of a great community activity. And uh, we definitely continue to do this year on year. That's been one of our most popular events every single year. Another event that I would like to highlight um, would be uh, something called as Fun with Science, which we had recently. Uh, several basic concepts of science. Uh, I wouldn't even want to use the word concept. You know, several basic day-to-day -day science were taught to children in a way, in a fun, hands-on way. So that again was an instant hit with all our uh, children. Uh, we also associated with SSERD, which is a Society for Space Education Research and Development. And they had set out a beautiful camp on space for our preschoolers. And I think that again connected very well with our children. So um, apart from the regular annual sports day, we have events and celebrations where we get parents and grandparents. I think uh, the ones that I just mentioned were uh, the most popular, I would say, so far. Yeah, and that's such a unique concept. I mean, I just love the 
thought of the barn and the farmers and that's so amazing. That's yeah. really, I'm sure the kids and parents would be just loving it. Yeah, that that, that was uh, great, Archana, because we also had, you know, a lot of people outside of our school community who joined us and a lot of volunteers who came forward and, you know, uh, taught basic concepts of composting to children. And uh, it was a beautiful uh, way of connecting with the community that our school operates on. So, um, that's that's been really interesting one of the questions that is predominantly in the minds on the minds of many parents is the safety Absolutely. so safety and especially in today's times that's of a primary concern to many of them so i would just like to understand some of the uh, safety protocols that you follow at your school um so when we walk into school uh, first and foremost we have trained security personnel who tracks movement both in and out uh, sub staff is trained in terms of the basic do's and don'ts there is basic first aid training that is given to them and the teachers as well there is basic first aid first aid training that the teachers also go through um, having said that, when uh, yes, safety I think today is of prime importance uh, as far as you know children are concerned. So um, we are talking about children up to the age of six whose curiosity levels are of course high. We are exploring the space around them. So in terms of the infrastructure, we've ensured that you know all the sharp edges. You know these small things, the sharp edges are foam, foam padded. Classrooms are sanitized after every single session. Uh, in the day. Uh, all the toys and play equipments are washed and dried out over the weekend. Uh, the entire facility is under CCTV surveillance and uh, there is monitoring that happens around the clock. And we also engage both our uh, you know, teachers as well as our sub staff uh, in a lot of uh, interaction with you know, uh, child psychiatrists to understand you know, uh, what, what is the margin you can go up to or what is right or what is not. Uh, apart from the teachers, yes, sub staff, right? They come from various backgrounds and probably they're not aware of you know, uh, what extent is right or what is not. So there is a continuous training that is given to them and uh, it is uh, something that is monitored all through the teachers, the sub staff, us for that matter. And we have uh, Dr. Ruchi Gupta, who is one of the leading uh, child psychiatrists in Bangalore, who is associated with us again for a very long time. Uh, so there is a lot of interaction that happens with Dr. Ruchi Gupta in terms of, you know, a certain situation in the class, you know, what was the best way you could have handled it. When we talk about safety, like I mentioned right now, we were talking about, you know, the physical safety protocols, right? Uh, the emotional uh, part of it also plays a huge role for the child, right? So, you know, how a child needs to be approached or, you know, is this right for a child? So there is a lot of continuous learning that happens uh, in terms of safety protocols, both, like I said, in terms of physical protocols, as well as, you know, dealing with situations, day-to-day yeah. -day yeah. situations within this. That's really good that you are not just taking care of the physical aspect, but even the emotional aspect of the children, which is so important. Yes. And especially after the times that we have been through, I think it's really important. Yes, yes. I mean, I think the, the two years has, uh, you know, opened out a different world, which all yes. of us were unaware of. And that required, you know, like I mentioned earlier, unlearning and relearning, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So in your school, uh, of course, you mentioned about the activities, the annual events that you have, but uh, where parents are concerned, what kind of participation do you expect from them? How much of participation, how often should they be a part of certain activities at school? I would say 100%, Archana. Parent partnership is one of the biggest contributor when it comes to early education True. right True. so at this point uh, it is a two-way communication and a two-way communication is a must to develop positive outcomes for children so we have a lot of activities in collaboration with parents you know like the events that i mentioned so you have parents who volunteer to be a part of the organizing committee along with us and uh, there are parents who work alongside uh, teachers, you know, so we also have this uh, one parent a week concept where, you know, the parent is invited to be a part of the classroom session. So it could be parent 
parents coming from various walks of life, you know, it could be a parent who's a dance enthusiast and who comes and talks to the children about why he or she chose that particular, uh, you know, area or what does she love about that, you know. So these are activities that really help uh, develop a strong bond for the parent with the school that the child goes to. Right, and parents also work alongside teachers and implement what is best for the child. So there is a periodic feedback that is discussed with the parents, and to, this helps address gaps and you know work in the best interest of the child. The first understanding of the child uh, definitely comes to the teacher from the parent. So you know um, uh, the parent and the teacher constantly discusses about where we think there is a shortfall or is there a different approach which the parent thinks might work better with the child than the one that we are trying it so like i said it's a hundred percent participation that is required during uh, the education so coming towards uh, uh, you know my last few questions uh, though you mentioned at the beginning uh, i would just like to know that uh, the, you did uh, work in the space of corporate but uh, probably what was the defining moment that you actually decided to get into the field of education? Yes, um, I think defining moment would be really apt because for me, though, you know, to begin with, like most of us, it always made me happy to be around kids and there is no better therapy than that, right? And uh, with my sister being from this background and a lot of discussions be happening around the space, I think uh, when it came to my own son, right, who went to one of the well-known names in the preschooling space way back, you know, I'm talking about many years back. I was like any first time parent anxious and paranoid and I kept a close tab and, you know, um, I always realized that, you know, that things could be implemented way more differently, right, from a parent perspective. I always felt, you know, uh, there was a gap in terms of maybe how a child was approached or, you know, how the child was engaged. I always realized that, uh, you know, there could be nothing more satisfying than making a difference to a young mind. And it is the most rewarding experience, right? So having um, been a parent or uh, being a parent myself, I knew what I expected for my child. And uh, then, of course, as an educationist, I saw what it was like, you know, from my sister's angle. So I think a blend of both came together and thus began our journey in this space. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> So um, though you have uh, just onboarded on a platform that is the schools, uh, I would just like to know from you that uh, so far, how has your experience been with our uh, platform? Um, I'm so glad I am associated with uh, schools, Arjuna. Uh, it is an absolutely great platform I, for both, you know, as a parent as well as an educationist. I think there is um, any information that you would need as a parent that is available on the platform. And again, you know, like talking about my son back then, uh, even uh, in terms of arriving at what I want for my child or what is best for my child was a challenge, right? You're like scouting around, hunting and trying to get a feedback. And I think that means schools is an amazing platform where you just sit back at your comfort and you have all the information uh, at the tip of your fingers. And I've uh, definitely interacted with, you know, a whole lot of professional people at schools, Archana, and I think the association has been great. And I'm glad I tapped upon schools. Thank I you. look forward to a long-term association as yes, well. Absolutely. We look forward to a long association with you. And uh, we wish you all and the school the very best. Thank and, you so much. Um, I'm sure the children are in the right hands with the kind of passion and the love that you all have uh, for the children and looking at their wholesome, you know, it's just not their physical needs, but even emotional needs, the way they're looking at it. Uh, the parents sure would absolutely, I'm sure, love your school. And we hope that you have many, many more branches in the coming years and that you will all really, really touch pinnacles of success. So it was indeed a pleasure to speak to you. Absolutely. My pleasure to Arjuna. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.